Hey everybody. I, this video, we are going to be talking about the online communication guidelines for this course. Um, so you're going to find those as part of week one content. So if we go into module one and we scroll down, you've obviously found this because you're watching this video, but here are our online communication guidelines. This is going to, these concepts are going to guide us through the entire semester. So it's really important content. This is content that's included in the week one quiz this week. So be sure to familiarize yourself with it and then also know where it is in the Moodle book so that you can use this as a resource as you, as we're working our way through this semester. So let's jump right in. So confidentiality. So I'm going to let you, like I do in my other videos, I'm not going to read this word for word, but I am going to talk briefly about the important parts of it. And um, if you take anything away from confidentiality, it's that it's a critical practice behavior for an LAC. It's also really critical to provide safe space in this class for engaging in some of the discussions that we're going to engage in. Some of them ask potentially contentious questions, you know? Um, so I just want us all to be aware that we're going to disagree and that's great. Like we should have discourse, we should have discussions and we should be able to disagree respectfully. We also want to make sure that we are, I think this course can also be highly reflective so asking you to reflect on your own experiences and share those. And I also, you know, you don't have to share things that you don't feel comfortable sharing. Um, I think that's an important, that's also an important behavior, practice behavior of an LAC is are really boundaries. You know, so if I ask about your experience, I don't want this, you know, like I want the pieces of your experience that are relevant to the question that we're asking, not an entire history. So what does that really mean? Well, you know what, when we hit those places in the semester and you're grappling with, what do I, what do I share here? Where do I hold back? What's appropriate? Maybe there's a better way that I word this. That's what I'm here for. Let me help you develop those skills. Shoot me an email. We'll connect over Zoom. We can talk through this. And you can come up with something that meets the assignment requirements, but also that you're comfortable with providing, you know, information you're comfortable sharing. So if you run into that, don't just not do the assignment, reach out, we'll talk about it. Um, the other piece is knowing that as LACs, we really have two pieces of confidentiality laws that we are required to follow. One is HIPAA and one is 42 CFR part two. And we'll learn more about those toward the end of our course. For now, the way that I want, what I want you to know is, I guess we're doing Vegas rules. What happens in class stays in class. It is not appropriate and it is not okay for you to discuss content, discuss what, you, what is shared in class outside of class. So this is the space to do it um, and we need to be respectful of each other. So that would be the main message I would take away from confidentiality. Practicing civil discourse. So like I said earlier, we're gonna be talking about things that are personable, personal, controversial, uncomfortable, potentially divisive. And we need to practice civil discourse in order to try to create that safe learning environment. So the goal here is to engage in constructive and honest conversation that enhances understanding. So we need to be more than just courteous and polite. Um, we need to cooperate and collaborate for the greater good. So what are some of the principles that can take us there? So we want to know, we want to undertake we're, what we're agreeing to in this class is the is undertaking a serious exchange of views, focusing on the issues rather than the individual. So we're really, we're not, when we disagree, we're disagreeing about the issue. We're not, you know, it's not about the individual, it's about the topic. 
we will defend our interpretations using verified information. So I'm going to ask you in the course a lot of questions from your experience. What do you think about this? And you get to share your opinion, but you need to cite other materials to back up your opinion. I'm well informed of this. I'm a critical consumer of knowledge. I didn't just do a Google search and find a blog where somebody agreed with me. I went to the library and I found a peer reviewed article and this is what it said. Um, we are going to thoughtfully listen to what others say. And in this course, since it's in writing, we're going to say, hmm, I wonder if this is what they meant or if this is how I'm interpreting it. And if there's a question there, asking that question and seeking clarification from your classmates, from me. Um, we're going to seek the sources of disagreement and points of common purpose. We're going to embody open-mindedness and a willingness to change our minds. Um, we are going to assume that we need to compromise and we are willing to compromise. We're going to treat the ideas of others with respects and we are going to avoid violence. So in this setting, that also means verbal, emotional, um, not just physical violence. So we are, civility is hard. And what I like, I like this quote, it is possible to disagree without being disagreeable. So we can disagree and be better informed because of it. So we have three simple guidelines here for online student success. So within our, within our online discussions, we're going to be practicing civil discourse, but what are some of the ways um, if I could take all of that and put it down, like, how am I going to be successful? This is a great tip sheet for online student success. So this, these three tips are, these three guidelines are simply, are really simply for communicating, but this link here has some really good information for success for online students. So I would check it out because I think that it would be helpful in a broader context. Again, in this Moodle book, we're just focusing on communication, um, but there's all sorts of tips in there for how to succeed in online learning. So first thing is be explanatory. So in your discussion forums, in your emails, don't just say the assignment didn't make sense, please help. Well, that doesn't really tell me what the issue is, right? Well, what about the assignment didn't make sense? So what you're doing there is, you know, creating, um, you have to, if you send me an email that says the assignment didn't make sense, please help. I'm gonna write back and I'm gonna, you're gonna wait for me to write back and say, thanks for your email, which assignment, what assignment, what class are you in? And um, then I'm gonna wait for you to get back to me then you're gonna wait for me to get back to you. So instead, a better way to do that is, say, is to say, the second assignment on topic three was confusing in regards to the instructions. I have a few questions that I hope you can clarify. In what format would you like the assignment? What is the due date, right? That tells me the assignment, that tells me what your questions are and the likelihood of me answering that in one response Mean, is higher, which means that you're going to get an answer to your questions faster. The second guideline is to be credible. Always cite your material. Um, always cite your material. You are, that's a requirement in the assignments, um, but it also speaks to what we're doing as we're practicing civil discourse in this class. And lastly, it's be respectful. So you are going to conduct yourself as if you're engaging, engaging um, in a conversation with someone physically. So it's happening in real time. We, um, you know, I think you'll notice often on social media, it's like, oh, I think that person posted something that they wouldn't say to me face to face, right? Um, we all can sit behind our computers, but we need to be able to start practicing respect and courteousness um, and professionalism within this online setting. Netiquette, netiquette. So netiquette, um, so how can I be practice etiquette in an online setting? Um, 
some of these things we've talked about, you're going to respect privacy, ask for clarification, avoid sweeping generalizations. Um, we might agree, disagree, but exposure to other people's opinions is part of the learning experience. It's also a part of our jobs as LACs. I disagree with many of my clients on many things, but I'm also meeting them where they're at. And I need to be able to disagree and disagree from maybe a place of curiosity um, or a place of understanding and not a place of defenses or a place of expertise that's not going to help move the conversation forward. Um, we're being respectful. We are, um, you know, everything you write is recorded on the internet. So there's no take backs. Um, you're taking a college class. So be sure that you are communicating professionally and academic, you know, and what's appropriate academically. We're allowing everybody the opportunity to speak. Um, we're criticizing ideas, not individuals or groups. So um, make sure that, you know, when we are disagreeing, that it's, I disagree with this thing, you know, like, thank you for bringing this forward. You know, I'm not quite, I'm not sure about this, you know, the way that I view it is in this way, and this is why. Um, and I'm backing that up. I'm avoiding inflammatory language. I'm not engaging in name calling. I don't expect any individuals to speak on behalf of their gender, ethnic group, class, status, um, et cetera. Like we're not, you know, I don't expect you to represent, to represent your demographics. Um, that's, it's my job to go out and become culturally competent um, diverse, you know, and competent within um, all of these diverse demographics. It's not, I don't expect you and we shouldn't expect each other to speak on behalf of our groups. We, typing in all capital letters indicate shouting. Um, be careful with humor and sarcasm, especially in this online setting, it can easily be misunderstood. So take the time to really express what you mean. Also, humor and sarcasm often aren't, it's not the academic language that I'm looking for in your assignments. So our assignments should be a time to be serious and stay on topic. Um, I love humor and sarcasm. And if you want to meet with me to discuss topics, we can engage in just we can engage in that um, because we're human. I think when we're writing academic papers, there's less room. There's just less room for that. Um, review all discussion postings before posting your own to prevent redundancy. Check for writing errors. That's in emails. That's in your written assignments. Like it's important. It's again, it's another way that you're representing yourself as an individual. If I get an email from anybody, you know, and it, there's a bunch of misspellings in it and the grammar is wrong, um, it takes away from your message because all of a sudden I'm looking at all of these spelling errors and I'm not getting your message. And the same is true for assignments. If there's the grammar issues and spelling issues and things like that take away from your really important ideas. So it's important to edit. You also have access to help with writing assignments through the university, through the um, Writing and Public Speaking Center. They're awesome. And that's what they'll do is they can help you edit those assignments. They can even help you get started on an assignment. I don't even know where to start. Great, that's what we can help you with. Um, Avoid overuse of acronyms, emojis, or emoticons. And I would say, you know, again, in um, in emails, that's one thing, but in your written assignments, for I would say avoid them altogether. And only post on the classroom discussion forum if the conversation is relevant to others. So um, on that questions forum on the homepage, if the question could be relevant to other people, that's when you would use that forum. If you are doing something individual, you know, if it's a topic that is individual to you, then an email is likely more appropriate. Um, 
So I will do a separate video, let's see, to go through the forum discussions because I think um, I just I want to keep these a little bit shorter. So thanks for watching this one and let me know if you have questions. Thanks, everybody.